welcome to MV Board Gaming. Today we're going to go through Goo Gong, published by Tasty Minstrel Games and designed by Andreas Stedding. It's a one to five player game and Nick is going to go through how we play and then we'll give you our review. All right, we're set up for a two player game of Goo Gong. Here you can see the main board and there are two player boards over here. Each player starts with four cards. I have them face up, but this is private information technically. As usual, I want them face up so I can explain the game a little better. There's our first player marker. So in Gugong, we are in China, and we are trying to, this is like 1570, the year 1570, we are representing, representing um, really rich families, and we are trying to bribe Chinese officials to do various actions. The best one that do, to, Basically, the best one, represented by victory points, is going to win. Whoever has the most victory points, as usual, will be the winner. It's divided up into these phases across the top of the board, and I should mention what we're looking at is a one to three player board, as you can see right there. The other side has four to five players, I believe. I believe the max player count is five, and looking at the box, and yes, it is indeed five. So, you first thing you do is Get a star player. This is going to be a, 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 like a chart for the, every round of the game. So this is the first round, so we don't care as much. We, we'll have a first player. We can refresh these travel tokens. It's the first round, so they're already out here. Roll dice. These three dice. Let's just say I roll those. Check out what is happening on um, Sunrise. So to do that, we will see if anyone has abilities here that will be represented by cubes, which are servants right there. So if anyone has um, servants on these boxes, because you can see the sunrise symbol, we will resolve those. This one, for instance, you put a servant um, boarding a ship. This one, you just get one servant from your pool of servants into your stock. So we check to see what's happening in sunrise. Then we get as many um, servants into our pool as the round it is. So in this case, we get six. Since it's the first round, I put six here already. And then we get to the main actions of the game. So this is where we're going to stop for now. And let's explain what we're doing. Because this is the main part of the game right here, that phase. So we are playing from our hand these gifts to bribe these Chinese officials. So let's take a look here. This card shows an action at the bottom and a value at the top left. To play this card, I would want to give one of these officials this gift. It, the number represents how valuable the gift is. So I would like to play a gift that is better than what they're gonna give me. Because that allows me to take this card, place this one, and do this action and the action where I signed. So with this card, this two, I would just put it into my hand, it'll be part of my hand next round. Okay, so if I did that action and I put that there, I would then first have the option of doing this action. Well, everything's symbolized, so I looked for that symbol and you can see it is right here. So I would have a, an option to do this action, followed by an option to do the main action where I sign the card. In this case, this area here is uh, all about the ships that I mentioned. You, whenever you see the symbol here, that's a servant. You are putting one servant on your ship and moving it one space. So in that case, I would take one of these ships, put it on the very first spot of the board, along with one of the servants from my pool into one of these three squares. That is putting one servant on a ship. Alternatively, they always have a more expensive but better action Usually it's better. In this case, this is fine because I didn't have a ship, but I can put uh, an extra cube, spend an extra cube to put two down onto the ship. And it doesn't move though. So I can put two here as opposed to the one that I put. When this becomes full, you can claim one of these bonuses wherever it moves. Cause it's gonna move in the last phase of the game if you don't force it to move right here. So then um, if this is full, I can take four VP if I stop here, um, take a nice 
extra action. Essentially, these cards are very good. They all have bonuses at the bottom. Not every card that you have in your hand, you notice, has a bonus at the bottom, but these all will. And you can get stop here and get a special worker, which is a, they call them a double servant. So it takes up two spots for one. It's pretty powerful, actually. So that would be the ship action. Now, you remember the dice? So th th this becomes powerful because if I take this card in my hand at a phase, the next phase after all this, we're gonna get more servants, not just the base amount that we get. We will get, for every equal number, we're gonna get another servant next round. So that's what that means. And also, for whoever has the most, whoever has the most equal cards to the numbers shown here, it's gonna get three victory points and move up a track that I'll mention later. The last phase will be um, moving the ships. Every ship will move if they're on here. So let's go over some of the more, uh, more actions. We got these horse folks right here, some cowboys. We can do this action just same way as we did everything. Like, like I said, we're always gonna be assigning these workers. So in this case, if I wanted that seven action, I would have to place this nine because I don't have anything above a seven to do it easily. There is a way to get around it. It's uh, I could explain it right there in a little bit. But I'm gonna put the nine there. I'm gonna put the seven in my hand, which is good because there's a seven there. Awesome. For the first time I do this, I can assign this guy wherever I want. But from then on, I'll have to move him in these, these uh, dotted lines. So I can assign him to move, to take this and move, oh, I'm sorry. You can see it, we can move, only do that once if I do it for free. But then there's a better action you can see, you can actually move it twice. So I can claim, if I, if I did that, I can actually move it again and do that. Unless we put a servant at the Great Wall, which is over here. Again, you can see the symbols. So I take these tokens, let's say I only claimed one, and I put them here. You can see that if I get doubles, um, if I get two, not doubles, if I get two, um, each two will give me a special action here that can kind of transfer different things, these chips for other items. So that's traveling. Here you can put um, a servant at the Great Wall for free, essentially. And the better action is to discard one and put two down. The person that has the majority in a two-player game is out of four. So if you have, if you put it down as the majority, you will get three VP. You will get one movement on the track, which I'll explain next. And you will be able to spend some of your influence here. So you'll be able to trip um, this influence track, I'll explain. But we're going to be moving up this throughout the game. And you can use this at this point only to spend some to get these actions here. Uh, let's do the one I keep talking about, this little track. This is a must. This is like, uh, it's, I think it's like Palace of Heavenly Purity. It's something like that. But you move up this track, and it's a must. You cannot avoid doing this. You will lose. So the first thing we check at the end of the game is make sure that we made it all, that the person made it all the way up to this track. The first person that does gets seven victory points. The second one, five. And if you're playing with three players, three victory points. We're doing it last. If you move beyond that, you're gonna get an extra victory point. Like if you moved up and then you, can, you still did actions that force you up, you will get another victory point for each time you do that. So this one's a very simple one. You just, for the free one, if you come here, you will move up one on this track and you could spend two to move them up two times. And also your influence up one. If you were the pink player, you just move here. This essentially is for tiebreakers. And again, like I said, you can spend so a lot of this is for tiebreakers and the first player marker. So let's do, go ahead and talk about this one now. If you come here, your free action is to move once and take the first player marker. So we know next turn, we're gonna give you the first player marker. Next turn, I'll look to see who has that and they're gonna take the bigger golder one. All right, so that is that spot. Here is probably the easiest spot in the game you spend how many ever jade is listed here. In this case, you'd want to do two, obviously the cheapest. You can spend two jade. There you go, to get one, or sorry, two um, servants to get one jade. And you just put that in your player board and you can see what jade scores and victory points as a set. 
If you got four of them, you get 10 points, for instance. That is that spot right there. Moving down, here we go. So these are decrees. You see the symbol there. You'll see it, um, again, you're gonna reference, you're gonna see these cards that let you do these actions as well. So if you come here and do this action for the decrees, you have to sign the value five or more, generally speaking. And you only have one option here. You can pay how many other cubes it says, one, two, three, plus one, if there is another person there. So if, if, if the second player was already on one of these spots, you gotta pay an extra one. So you, play, you do that, you pay how many ever it says, and you put one of your cubes down on that spot. So like I already referenced these two. So these two would be, give you ongoing abilities. You can pay one less to do a travel. Remember it costs two to do a big travel. Now it will cost you one less if you had a cube here. And this ongoing ability, remember I said you have to get a better gift. Now you can give an equal gift and still consider it better. And these just give you extra victory points. Um, two for every jade extra. Uh, max, you can do it five times, so 10 points. And just eight points straight up. Before I go, I just wanted to add a quick point about what if you don't have cards to play if you cannot exceed um, this number from your hand. So if I only have this two, I can only, let's say that one wasn't out there and there was nothing there that I could exceed. I still have options. I can trade a card out here for this card, but I have to spend either two, and this is all um, shown right here. I can spend two servants. I could discard a card from my hand or I can exchange a, a gift card without performing any actions. All right. And that's, I just wanted to point that out before I go. All right, we just finished playing. We're going to give our reviews. For me, this worker placement game scores an 8.8. 8. Whoa. Yeah, I love the game. Um, I, I do think it plays best with three or four because we played a two-player um, quite a few times, and it, it loses some of its steam at two. But I'm not going to hit it too hard for that. I do think it plays best at three or four, though. I'll, I'll say that right from the get-go. Uh, I love worker placement games, so this twist on worker placement, it really works for me. I think it's, uh, I, I'd highly recommend it if you are a medium weight, uh, medium heavyweight, right in that line of Euro game players. So it's a recommendation for me for sure, 8.8. .8. Vic? My review, a little bit lower, I gave it a 7.6. Um, really like how easy it is to learn because a lot of the... Uh, Actions are depicted at the top. They're all symbolized. So really, once you learn the iconography, it's not that uh, difficult to understand uh, the rewards you're going to get for a certain action. And it's really interesting the way that the cards work in the game, where you have to be mindful that just because you're trying to get lower numbers because they're at the top of the dice and they're going to get you a, a servant for the next round, you have to be careful that those are gonna be the cards you're gonna use. So there's a little more thought into the cards that you choose to put down and knowing that your opponent would get to play, pick those up as well. So I really like that and I think it's a great game overall and it's a lot of fun, good worker placement. Uh, let us know in the comment section below what your favorite worker placement game is. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, make sure you like this video and we'll join you next time for a great game review. Goodbye.